What's up, Sim Racers? TJR Sim here, and today we're looking at Forza Motorsport 7 with motion and tactile feedback. It's actually about time, right? Uh, if you're like me, you've been seeing a lot of E3 shows. I think Inside Sim Racing did them. Um, uh, several other channels, you know, that actually go to E3 would see uh, Forza 7 being showcased there. And uh, here's one, the Tannel channel. I'll just let it play in the background so you, as you can uh, see what's going on full motion with actual Forza 7. So, you know, it is uh, possible. I got my little magnifier up there. It is possible, uh, obviously. And so I've often, often wondered why can't I have it in my own home? And now that I have next level racing, next level racing V3 rig, uh, man, what a joy when I saw the, uh, the update saying, hey, we now have Forza Motorsport 7. So, uh, of course, obviously updated it real quickly and reloaded Forza 7 because I hadn't been playing it for quite a while. And I do have a new PC build here. So, um, you know, what a better time, right? So I uh, fired it up and man, has, has Next Level Racing just transformed this game into something that's just incredible now uh when you're grabbing gears and it's slamming you back in the seat when you're feeling the rpms climb when you're feeling your traction loss go and your your back wheels are hopping uh from from wheel hop or and combined with traction loss with the tactile feedback of your tires spinning up coming off the line or in or, or drifting through the corners and stuff it's just so much more immersive now than it ever was before so uh really really enjoying uh motion setup with forza 7 totally transformed the whole game for me so you know what we're going to do today is i'm going to explain the settings for it so you know if you ever do get this system you can refer back to this video look at the settings and and, and know kind of how to set it up yourself uh for your rig so Next Level Racing has really good software. It's not cumbersome. It's not too hard to learn. It's it's just right. So let me go over the easy ones. And I found this little magnifier here on Windows. So hopefully that'll help uh, some of my viewers that, you know, hey, can you magnify this? Well, yes, I can. So let's go. So on the settings, if you have tactile turned on and you have a transducer, just one's fine. Actually, one for Forza Motorsport 7 is probably plenty. I would get one big one, uh, but uh, yeah, I would. you could get by with one. Uh, fine, two would be a little better. Obviously, the more you have, the better it is, right? But um, I'm using, well, I'm using like seven. But right now, all I'm using for Forza 7 is just four of them. I just got the one sound card running it. Uh, with the four transducers and it works great so I'm getting engine RPM and wheel slip and that's really the only thing and suspension uh, so going over curves and stuff you're getting that so that's really the only three that you you need and then adds that extra layer of immersion so uh, if you're new to sim racing and setting up uh, tactile feedback settings and stuff here's some I'll go over this here briefly with you uh, now my settings will vary and you know motion uh tactile feedback uh, it, it's all dependent on the person what they like uh what they like to feel uh how much jerking around you want to feel or how much vibration you want to feel and stuff so i tend to uh weigh on the side of less is more so this is what i'm doing so rpm frequency bias 149 now this is you know obviously you can set this up higher to 250 down to zero I have around 149. Uh, let's see if I can get it back there. 150 is fine. Uh, but the uh, this is basically, you know, when you're running something like a Porsche or this setting is for La Ferrari. Probably spelt that wrong. But um, you, it's a higher revving engine. It's not like it's a lopey Camaro SS engine. You know, it's it's it doesn't have a lope to it uh, like that. It's more of a higher higher revving engine. So you'll want to turn the bias up a little bit more. So you you feel the frequency that you're hearing through your headphones um, and then your intensity this is basically just how much how much volume you want uh, set it to your liking suspension frequency same thing 
so you're you're feeling what you think you should be feeling the frequency wise uh, it's from 90 to zero uh, you want a little bit more of a, a harder thud you go down a little bit more of a a tighter feel you go up uh, and, and this one really is just for curbing in Forza 7 uh, you don't feel the bumps in the grass you don't feel when you go off the track as far as tactile goes uh, off the track uh, you you feel the curbing is what they're picking up with their uh, telemetry and stuff so just to let you know this is what's being picked up uh, suspension intensity I have it actually down always zero uh, transducers are, are pretty powerful and uh, zero I feel quite a bit actually uh, through it so uh, I put it at zero but adjust to your flavor uh, wheel slip frequency same thing this is when you're spinning at the tires when you're drifting around the corners and stuff uh, your wheel slip is is what you're gonna be feel as far as your rear tires chattering or your front tires for front wheel drive chattering you know either way uh, that's that's what you're gonna feel and then of course the intensity of it is of course the volume of it so uh, really awesome to take off from a dead stop uh, in the game and, and whatever car that you're, you're having fun with and you're doing your rolling burnout uh, and you're just feeling this extra vibration going down the straights of your tires spinning up and then it fades away because uh, you, you finally grab traction and stuff so really really cool uh, extra layer of immersion so love it uh, heave heave intensity and rev limiter, rev limiter uh, intensity. I leave those off. I like my motion to handle all this, and I don't like to overload my transducer. So I I say leave them off. Uh, the rev lever rev limiter. If I can quit saying lever, uh, limiter intensity. That one's really controlled here. You have to tick this box on to actually feel that. So when you're bouncing off a rev limiter, uh, you'll feel you'll feel the vi extra vibration from the uh, uh, rev limiter actually bouncing off so I have it on rev limiter on platform motion so when I hit the rev limiter uh, it gives me a little judder of motion uh, or it just gives me a dive uh, towards if you like hit your rev limiter and your front end dives like on a real car because uh, you, you, you cut spark uh, that's that's what that does so anyway that is the tactile part of it pretty simple uh, the motion post processing, you know, for beginners, I say leave this alone. It's actually really good the way it's set up right now. I have messed with it, but it basically controls <coughs> your drop off slopes and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, you can see how this curve kind of changes and stuff here. Uh, this is, you know, where when you're going up and down over bumps and stuff, how fast it drops off and your offset of it. Uh, so, from dropping off as far as the tire dropping off so uh yeah it this one can actually get kind of confusing and you'll want to do it off of feel obviously but uh, a lot of testing goes involved in trying to adjust that i leave it alone uh, especially for this one uh, my other sims actually adjust it uh and, and i like it better because i like a little bit quicker action of the suspension a little bit faster rebound feel uh in my car so i i change it there um now let's get on to the meaty greedy of it here this is the motion part of it and these are all the settings you have now these settings are actually slightly different than what um, let's say race room has uh, oops click back on it uh, and this is kind of how it comes default everything at one uh, which is way too much for me and but in some cars it's actually fine but uh, this one has overall intensity, like the other sim racing games, bump intensity, roll intensity, heave, surge, and sway, and then weights transfer, and wheel slip intensity. But when you go back to, you know what, let me see, I can just probably move it over here. Compare the two. Oops, move that down. You can see the difference here. Overall intensity is the same, bump intensity is the same, but instead of roll intensity, we have body roll gain and instead of heave intensity we have lateral G gain and instead of surge we have longitudinal G gain and then obviously uh, sway intensity is, is now longitudinal G force balance and we got vertical G force balance uh, instead of the wheel slip uh, and then the rev limiter actually instead of the wheel slip intensity so settings are a little bit different and if you're used to this setup these don't make a lot of sense to you uh, even with the diagram so dive into it here real quick 
and let me explain it for you and then i'll show you i'll, I'll jump in the game and then you can i can explain what i'm feeling and stuff as well but here it is on on the screen uh obviously you can do a screenshot i wonder if i can lower this down to just 150 here views nope no, it's just 200, huh? Oh, hey, here we go. No, nope. sorry. Bear with me. Anyway, we'll just stick to 200. A little bit bigger. Go away. All right. So, overall intensity. That actually just controls your overall intensity across all your settings. Is literally below it. Uh, if you got your settings to where you want them, uh, where it feels comfortable to you. Uh, by all means, um, oops, I changed my uh, program here. Uh, by all means, you know, just adjust the overall intensity uh, and you'll be fine. Now, the bump intensity, this one is actually literally the bumps in the curbing that you feel. So, the higher the number, the more bumps you feel. Uh, it's not necessarily like it's adding a quantity of more bumps. It's just, I guess it kind of is actually. It's not like it's added 2.5 more bumps, but it is adding all the bumps that you could possibly feel if you turn this up you'll feel them so if you want a track that's um yeah maybe a really bumpy but you don't want it to be bumpy you can turn this setting down uh and, and it'd be less bumpy as if you're riding around in a cadillac instead of riding around in a, a grand touring car so uh that one's actually handy as well and that one you'll see this little line that goes through it that one actually coincides with vertical g-force gain as well and that's why I drew this line to it. And uh, this one is the bump gain. Gain. This is basically the volume of the bumps. Uh, this is your volume knob here. So whatever you have for your bump intensity, if you're not feeling them enough or too much, you can turn it up or down. So obviously going to the right is more powerful, more forceful the bumps are. And to the left, the lower and less forceful the bumps are. So uh, these two go hand in hand. That's why I got a line to them. So keep that in mind uh, you know easy enough just crank it all the way up to 250 the max bumps that way you feel all the possible bumps out there uh <clears throat> waves in the track and all that and uh well not necessarily waves in track but just the bumps in general so uh well yeah some of the waves too you feel some of the harsher waves rather so but as far as your gain goes your volume knob you know you're gonna mess with it down here now let's get on with the body roll gain now this one's a little bit different uh, we'll hop from slides and, and left to right body. Um, this is the roll on track banking. So uh, some people may think this is your, your left or right of your seat actually moving left and right. Uh, to a degree it is. It's actually the, the body roll as you see in the picture up here. Uh, the, this here, the whole body itself rolling uh, side to side. So more you have it cranked up, the more you're going to feel when you're, like you're going over curbing and stuff. And the right side of the car picks up going over the curbing or you're on a banking at Daytona uh, and the whole rig leans to the to the left when you're going around the you know the, the, the high bank in there that's what that one's for uh, a lot of fun to have that especially combined with uh, your your seat moving literally left and right and braking forward and accelerating back all those little things it all does simultaneously together which is a lot of fun and a lot more realistic uh, so not just a roller coaster ride but you actually you get what the car is doing especially in Forza Motorsport 7 because uh, the force feedback is a little lacking uh, through a wheel even with me using Fanatic uh, wheels which gives me pretty good high re resolution as far as what I'm feeling on the track uh, I am so much more in tune now with what my car is doing with this motion than I was without it so uh, making it a lot more fun just a lot of fun uh, so anyway lateral g-force gain uh, that's the next one this is your your swaying from left to right when you're turning so when you turn the wheel to the left your seat moves to the right uh, simulating g-force of, of it trying to push you to the opposite direction you're turning uh, that's what that one does uh, the longitudinal g-force gain here is the amount of forward and backward push under acceleration and braking so all right um, so what that's going to do is basically when you're hitting the brakes and it's pushing you into your steering wheel, uh, and then as well as when you're accelerating, it's, you know, shoving you back, the seat's rolling you backwards to simulate taking off. 
right? So really neat there is that when you set your balance, which is this very next one, controls the balance of it. So if you want uh, more, so this is your volume of the gain. So if you turn this all the way up, it's gonna give you the most uh, volume out of it pushing you all the way forward, going to the full extent range of motion of the seat forward, and as well as going backwards at the same time as under acceleration. But your, your balance here is basically saying that, well, if you won't say more acceleration, if it pushing you back or the seat rocking back from acceleration, but less pushing the seat pushing you forward or braking, you can dial this up to the right to have more acceleration and less braking. But this is still your volume knob as far as how much of it you're gonna feel. So these two go hand in hand as well. Uh, but a neat little thing is that, when, let's say you're taking off from the line and you're getting, uh, you know, wheel hop and stuff uh, from from the from the uh, or is it the, the the bump intensity and stuff. And as your as your car is settling in, or as as your tires gaining traction, you know, this of course pushes you back. Say to whatever extent that you have this at, it's going to push you back at that degree. Uh, uh, say maybe 15 degrees and then you go to the max maybe it's 30 degrees right so it's going to push you back <clears throat> but as you as you start gaining traction and stop spinning it starts pushing you back more till you hit what you set it at uh, so it's really cool because then you can feel okay i'm not going anywhere the car's the car's just spinning in one spot and then okay i'm starting to grab some traction and i'm starting to push me back in the seat and, and it's really really cool uh, to do there and, and of course same thing for ba brake balance you know you're, you're able to uh, modulate your brakes better because you're literally pushing your seat forward or your seat's pushing you forward uh, under braking and stuff so uh, it's a little easier to modulate uh, your braking and how much your threshold of braking plus if you turn off say ABS you get this really quick uh, left right left right left right judder in your seat and it's really just up and down up and down up and down judder from each left and right side of your seat uh, for uh, wheel hop. So as if you're skipping the front tires under heavy braking and stuff. So that's really cool as well. So it gives you, you can start getting that wheel hop and then just ease off the brake just to come out of it and maximize the pressure of brake that you need under, under, under heavy loads. So pretty cool, uh, really, you can really dial in stuff here and, and become faster actually. Uh, let's see, rev limiter offset. Now this one's uh, uh, really cool. So this is this is the one when you're shifting in between gears. Uh, there's a little slight pause. Uh, obviously, if you got like a say a, a paddle shift in you know Ferrari or Porsche or something like that, it's going to shift quicker and maybe less of a pause. Well, this is where you can adjust this pause. Uh, I notice when you adjust it higher and higher, you start to get the um, motion of this rev limiter on motion platform being checked, you start getting that motion of, of back and forth as far as, hey, you're bouncing off the rev limiter and it's juddering you forward and backwards uh, because you're uh, really fast actually, because uh, you're bouncing off the rev limiter. So anyway, that's what that does. Uh, another cool one to adjust here. I think 150 is the normal. And usually I'm seeing, depending on the car, anywhere from 500 and below is just kind of a, a dip in the front end of the car. So the seat pushes you forward, replicating the dipping of the front end of the car, waiting for you to shift because you ran out of rev limiter. So um, that's what that does. So pretty, pretty neat. There is my, let's see, Windows E. There we go. Go back to normal zoom. All right, so that's it for the explanation of, of the features and stuff of what's going on here. Um, yeah, we're back to 100%. All right. Let's jump into the game, and I'll explain what I'm feeling. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, drop them down below, and I'll explain what I'm feeling as I feel it. Um, let me see. That. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Forza 7. I'm already loaded up. And this is just a test, uh, I think this is just a test track day thing here. And I have the volume down uh, so you can actually hear me talk. So obviously if you have the, uh, so I, 
Let me stop here. I, I don't have the clutch activated, but uh, what you'll feel when you take it off is, of course, the, it's gonna, the seat's going to push you back. The transducer is going to be vibrating and all that. So every time you grab a gear, it does that gyration of front end dipping and then pushing you back in the seat and stuff. So. Uh, you're feeling the chatter, of course, obviously in the wheel. Curbing, you're feeling it, and you're probably hearing it. And the transducer is vibrating over the curbing. Uh, so, <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, when you're making these turns here, the right hand turn, uh, you get the sway of the motion of the seat. Now, it's not as exaggerated as what you saw on the screen, it is what you like. So, getting some. Uh, traction loss there under braking because I do have ABS off and I uh, had some wheel hop as well so anyway whoa too wide obviously it's actually hard to play this and can't hear the sound quite as good because I have to have it turned down in game so you can hear me explain things the visual speed is actually really cool. Uh, you'll want to run around 60 FPS if you can, obviously. And you know, I'll cover the settings right at the end of this uh, for in game settings of what you need to cover. Whoa, so you feel this gyration going up and down when you go off road. Obviously, the traction, uh, the curbing right there. You feel all that bumps, as well as hear them right now from the transducers. Going down the straightaway, you feel the bumps. No longer going straight is boring anymore. It's not boring anymore. You feel the uh, the bumps actually themselves. I'm driving horribly. Hard to explain and drive at the same time and hit my braking markers, but um, yeah, you feel the bumps going down the straight. So as this track is bumpy, uh, where it's bumpy, that's where you feel them. These aren't laser scanned, you know, but they do have, you know, fake bumps, I guess, put in them and stuff to replicate what's going on. Pretty neat when you're, you're slamming through the gears right there, taking off, you know, the seat's leaning to the right because, you know, I'm losing traction and spinning out, and then I'm grabbing another gear and it's slamming me back in the seat, uh, as, as well as turning slightly. Uh, from, from leaning the seat as you turn in. So I turn left, it leans right, turn right, leans left, seat leans left. Uh, so you get all that feeling all instantaneously at one time. So uh, pretty damn cool actually. Okay, I'm obviously sucking on driving, but you get the gist of it. So. Okay. Let's get on with the settings here. Let's finish this race and quit. And I will show you the settings real quick uh, in game of what you want to set up. Uh, so after you get your motion and stuff set up, it, it's really, it's plug and play. So it's not like uh, some of the sim experience stuff where you got to look for the config file uh, for it. It automatically finds the game for you uh, during this during the next level racing setup screen it, it recognizes hey you got a new game you want to install it and you say yes it takes like two seconds and it's done but once you launch the game which you can ironically launch the game from the software right here and just say run the game and it'll open up the game just fine uh, once you're into the game like this what you'll want to do is come over here to options and you will go to your HUD and you will go all the way down to the bottom of your HUD and you'll see data out, data out IP address and data out IP port. These are the three that you're gonna mess with. So you are going to adjust the data out to be on, the data out IP address to be these, these numbers you see here, 10.0.0.255 and then the data out IP port, 120. And that's it. That's all you do as far as that goes. And you hit accept and you're done. Uh, then you go over to video. And this is more of a suggestion than anything else, I think. But 
Uh, this is what I do, but you want to set your performance target to 60 FPS and uh, it really doesn't matter where you have any of these other settings. Their requirement is just for you to try to hit 60 FPS to get the most out of the motion sim so it's matching up with what you're seeing on screen. So uh, I've noticed even when I've dropped down into the, you know, 35 or 45 FPS, stuff like that, uh, at times with like rain and crashing and all that going on, uh, the motion was right on target. It wasn't delayed. It wasn't ahead of it or anything. It was, it was right on target. So uh, this might be more precautionary than anything uh, there. But yeah, that's all the settings you do. Uh, what you're seeing on the, what you saw on the screen is is what I feel uh, live. So pretty cool. I'll actually show you a video of what. As well but in this video let me scoot it up here you'll, you'll see my seat you know doing its thing uh, while running next level racing so here here you go so uh, you know obviously you know I'll turn the sound up just a little bit so that might be good. Hopefully you can hear me over this. So yeah, you can see the seat as I'm running through the curves and stuff. The seat's moving around on you. It's not going too crazy. I don't have everything turned way up. But I do have it really close to what the stock settings are now as far as going one down the line. Uh, just to show a little bit more exaggeration. But see how it's going bumpy on the straights and then diving forward under braking. Of course, pushing back under acceleration. Leaning to the right as I'm turning to the left. You know, everything's very fluid so this is a better way of showing you or explaining it to you as you can actually see it than me just telling you what I'm feeling in a car uh, I think so uh, yeah we'll continue on with this so yeah it's, it's just a lot of fun guys braking you feel the front end come in now I don't have the braking adjusted too harshly as far as when I hit the brakes that it slams me into the seat too much or into the wheel rather in this case because the seat's pushing you around. It's a seat mover after all. Uh, but yeah, it's again to your liking of what you want to see. Or feel rather, actually not see. Because it's different when you're running the game as, as opposed to watching someone play it. When you watch someone play it, uh, it looks a lot more excessive like on the first video you saw. And I'm sure me running motion now for so long I do know it looks excessive it is actually excessive but uh, this is actually I don't think this really looks excessive to me but it feels pretty good a little bit too much motion uh, but not too far off from from perfect really for what I want to feel it's just the subtle movements of of moving your around in the in the seat and to, to replicate the g-forces uh, that you're seeing on screen and stuff, but you can see that it is timed just the same uh, So bumps I'm feeling when I'm turning around the cars uh, All that it's it's all the same as what you see my seat moving. So pretty cool Yeah, I like that little judder it does there too you know, I was losing traction from the back end sliding going to that front straight and then it, it grabbed and then pushed me forward in the seat so uh, pretty cool there's little subtleties in motion that you don't ever pick up you'll never I don't know never but you know at least so far I haven't picked them all up in my wheel and I think it'd be pretty hard to pick them all up in your wheel as far as obviously the bumps going down the uh, down the straight you're not gonna feel that in your wheel your wheels Fine. You don't feel that unless you're trying to turn over them, uh, but just going straight, you wouldn't feel that, right? So uh, that's you know one aspect that's re being replicated. The g-forces of accelerating and, and decelerating, you don't feel in a wheel. Uh, so when you add these extra layers of immersion while you're racing uh, on something like Forza Motorsport 7, it's just bliss, man. It's really really cool.
like I mentioned earlier, the neat thing when you go over that curb is you actually feel it in the motion itself. So you could have no transducers going and still feel it. And actually in this video, I have the transducers turned off just so uh, the recording camera wouldn't pick them up so much. This is all done with my cell phone, actually, as far as that part of it goes. Uh, so it's a little bit grainy. But you get the picture. Anyway, that's about the end of that video there. I hope you enjoyed this look at Next Level Racing with the, uh, uh, you know, with Forza Motorsport 7. Full motion, tactile feedback, all the setup for it, uh, how to set it up as well. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's pretty freaking awesome, guys. So, highly recommend it. If if you needed an extra excuse to push you over the edge, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not paid by Next Level Racing to promote the products. I'm just trying to let you know how much fun I'm having. I think you should have just as much fun, uh, especially if you're an enthusiast with sim racing. Uh, this you'd enjoy it. So it's a good, uh, good, good distraction, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, we'll check you later. I'm out.